It's got to be better here in 19 for Florida State. Uh, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, running down the Seminoles position by position. We are breaking down the running back position at uh, Florida State uh, here at Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We got uh, Jason Parker on the line from Chop Chat. And uh, if you can uh, help us build the channel, you can do so very quickly by grabbing the Amazon link in the description section below. Just do your regular shopping right there. Also, two exclusive live streams. How can you beat that? You get one where you come on Talk College Football with me. The other one, I react to your YouTube comments, which total about 45,000 at this point year to date. So thank you for the great response we've had to our content, uh, much of which involves Mr. Parker here hey. talking for the state football. We do it every Wednesday night live at 7 o'clock Eastern time. So you got to join us for that. And then we drag him on to talk more. So we're we're riding them like a bell cow here uh, in terms of having to uh, do some yeoman's work for us. I'm trying to go to every cliche involving difficult work that I can, I guess, Jason, in one sentence. I'm going to need to fill out that overtime form later. So if you could email me, that would be We'll, we'll get that to you. Thank you. Cam Akers uh, was expected to be that kind of guy when he came into the program. He generally was that first year, despite the ills of the offensive line. He ran for a thousand yards, but he's the name that, comes to mind readily for anybody that uh, follows college football from outside of Tallahassee, but it's a lot more complicated a situation that's going to involve a lot more players than just Cam Akers here in 2019. Well, and that's the biggest question. And I think there's there, when you talk about what happened with FSU football in 2018, everyone talks about the offensive line. Uh, everyone talks about the secondary as the positions of need to me, running back is going to be a huge concern in Tallahassee come 2019 because you look, and I'm looking at the roster right now, at this point, there are four running backs on the roster. You have Akers, you have Kalan LeBron, who, excuse me, Kalan LeBron, who's coming off of a devastating knee injury last season, and you have Anthony Grant and Middleton. You, so you have Cam Akers. And what happens if Cam Akers, God forbid, gets hurt against Clemson, Miami, or even in the opener against Boise State? You are stuck in a situation at running back where, where what do you have? That that's the concern. That that to me is the huge concern, the huge caution with the FSU offense this season because you know what you have in James Blackman. You know you have quality backups, backups at quarterback. You have quality receivers. That, you know we can touch on later, but at running back, it's right now Cam Akers and who else? If LeBorn gets healthy in time for a couple games into the season, get him worked out, then I'll be a lot more confident. But right now, every time Akers touches the ball, that's going to be the concern is please don't get hurt. Please don't get hurt. The other thing with Cam Akers, I will say, and, you know, he came in, I think his freshman year, he runs for over a thousand yards. You have a lot of FSU fans who say, oh, okay, we're going to be fine. You've got this kid, one of the top recruits in the country in the class of 2017. Then you have last year. He runs for 700 yards, a little over 700 yards. But you take off, out of 161 carries, you take off his three biggest carries. Three of those carries equal just under 200 yards. He goes from 4.4 yards a carry to dropping over an entire yard per carry if you just take out three carries. Three out of 161 carries. That, to me, as much as we want to talk about the offensive line for FSU having problems, there's a point where if you're Cam Akers, if you're, I believe it was the number two or number three overall recruit in the 2017 class, top running back recruit in the entire class, there's a point where you have to do some of the work. You have, you just can't say, hey, I had a down year because our offensive line was one of the worst in the history of college football. You need to live up to your job. If Cam Akers can play like 2017, FSU will be fine. If he starts out slow against Boise State, and even slower against Louisiana Monroe and Virginia and whatnot in those first couple of games, that's going to be an area for concern. That's going to be a major area for concern for Coach Taggart and Coach Bryles. What you bring up uh, statistically is actually significant, Jason, because if you go to just about any team in the country, mm -hmm. take their number one running back who's averaging the, the, the average yards per carry, not in the NFL, in mm -hmm. college football is extremely high. If your number one running back's running for four and a half yards per carry, you're probably not a very good team. 
your top running backs running for five and a half, six, 6 6.2 yards per carry, typically for a decent, not elite college football team. If you're Clemson and Travis Etienne, it's more like almost eight yards per Mm -hmm. carry. Okay. What you did there is if you do that for most running backs, it doesn't change their overall yards per carry much at all. You know, you take away their their three top carries and their 55, 48, and 42 yards, and they're averaging 5.9 yards per carry, and it goes down to uh, 5.78. You just did that with Cam Akers, and you got to realize that uh, I'm thinking of a couple of those runs, and they were very good runs. Obviously, they went to the house, but had that goal line been at 30 yards instead of 75 yards, then it would have been a 30 yard. You know, once you pass the secondary, it could have been a 142 yard run if the field was that long. It just didn't really matter after that. And you're basically showing that he was pretty ineffective in the 157 carries for the most part, not every carry, of course, Mm -hmm. but over the duration of the rest of his attempts, uh, it was a pretty ineffective effort by Cam Akers. Wow. And, I mean, the thing is, it it starts with the opener. You look at the opening game last season against Virginia Tech. He ran 14 carries for 82 yards. One of those runs was an 85-yard run where he got stopped short of scoring a touchdown. So that means he had 13 carries for negative three yards. You're you're coming into that season off a 1,000-yard season off of being one of the top recruits in the country in class of 2017, and in your first game you run essentially 13 carries for negative three yards, yes, once again, the offensive line was atrocious. But that's a point where you have to step up and say, all right, I'm Cam Akers. I need to, I need to do more than, than, I, than, I, than most running backs in my position are usually asked to do, but this is what I'm going to have to do. And you look, the Clemson game, 11 carries for seven yards. The Miami game, 11 carries for 46 yards. These are He's under running under four yards a carry each time. That's a problem, and this is your number one running back. And essentially, at this point, your only running back for the Seminoles. That's going to be a problem. So the other kid you mentioned uh, with the injury issues, and I'm going to have to pay close attention during the Boise State game because I've seen him play, but I cannot latch on to the pronunciation of his name. Laburn, Ron Laburn. I've heard it all over the place from a number of different people that are actually following the team. So uh, I'll, I'll pay attention the next time I see him. And again, that's going to be Boise State because I can't wait to see that game. And he's good. He's good. Laborn is, is a very good running back. If he is healthy, then FSU has a, a decent one two duo that I would I would say rivals maybe in the early 90s when you were early to mid 90s when you had work done and Rock Preston, you had those guys. Uh, but also that we're talking about 25 years ago as far as the running the running back spot. But that is going to be the question is is he going to be healthy enough to maybe not be a hundred percent, but is he going to be 75%, 80% by that time that Boise State game comes around? If he's around 80%, I'm a little more confident. If it's 70 or less, then that's the huge question mark. So there's got to be more than four running backs on the roster, but you read off the four guys that have any type of contribution or productivity in their background, correct? As of, as of July 12th, as of yesterday, these are the four running backs that are on the roster wow. for wow. FSU right now. And they did not bring anyone in with the class of 2019. That's, that's one of the issues. That's, see, now you're starting to get – there we go. I see the mind going. You're, you're realizing what I said when I printed my the like, Oh my God, what is going on? Yeah, and that's going to be a huge issue. That's why you will be seeing a lot of passing the ball, at least early on, at least until we see if LeBorn is healthy enough. Well, they really shouldn't have allowed themselves to get in that position. And mm-hmm. I know Willie Taggart only has uh, two recruiting classes under his belt and can't be completely held responsible for that. But you go ag- again across the country to just, uh, I'm not even going to the elite teams, and they've got six or seven running backs on the roster, and they've got four guys that you feel comfortable. Sure, you got a number one or number two guy, and you're really locked in on those guys, but you, you know the third and fourth guys at a place like a Florida State should be extremely capable, and you should be confident that they can do the job. Well, and not- that's not to say that those guys can't. We just have a, no idea whether they can well, he brought LeBorn in with the 2018 class, with his first class in Tallahassee, and I'm sure that a lot of the recruiting was done by the previous administration. But he, that, So he did bring in a running back, and the thought was, okay, I've got Cam Akers, 
I bring in, I bring in this guy who will take over, who can take some of the load, but then will also be the man once anchors eventually leaves for the NFL. You just didn't predict that he was going to blow out his knee early on in the 2018 season. 